If you use different amounts of water, it changes the pitch. separates Nogales, uh, Sonora in Mexico from Nogales, Arizona. And basically it's a, a city that had uh, familial relations. There was a city where there was a sis two, two sister cities side by side. People usually came back and forth with a very simple relationship with the board of a port of entry. Um, a wall went up that separated the city in half, divided it, cleaved it in two. And uh, as a result, the two cultures had been separated. What, you know, there's two people, but also one people. And so there's this wall that's gone up. And so my idea was, as a sound sculptor, I played public places, I played swing sets, bridges, you know, all sorts of things. Um, I had this idea to find an object that had uh, political symbolism to it, something that may be metaphorical, um, be interested, you know, as far as a national debate, something that's topical, and then play it, make it available to the world at no charge, and see what happens. So what I did was um, I got my cello bow and my chopsticks and a little micro recorder and went down to the wall at separates uh, Nogales, Arizona, Nogales, Mexico, and I started to play it. Um, I played the wall, I played uh, some barbed wire fences that are also in the area. I played uh, water bottles because um, many of the migrants that, that come to the U.S. Uh, water is very important when you're going through the desert. Um, Right now, in July of 2007, I think the last number I saw before I came was roughly 113 people have died um, from exposure, mostly, um, from heat and that sort of thing. Uh, and so water is, is crucial. And one of the things that you'll see a lot out in the desert are these water bottles that people have left behind. So I thought that was part of the story that I wanted to tell. So I include that in the, in the, uh, in the work. I also include um, Homeland Security uh, helicopter sounds, uh, the sound of wind, the sound of um, there's a, there was a shrine along one of the roads that was dedicated both to uh, travelers and to police alike, and so I incorporated that. And I took all these different elements and I played these different these different things using different techniques, mm -hmm. and I compiled everything into a uh, into a single work, which I called the Anta Project. And the Anta Project was designed to tell the story of a migrant's journey from being on the side of Mexico, looking at the U.S seeing all of the border uh, security, the helicopters, the lights, you know, all that strangeness in the DMZ, and then entering into the desert and trying to find your way through the desert, sort of the strangeness of the heat and, and the, the, the strange rocks formations and making your way through this, the desert into the strange country, and then eventually uh, coming to an open road where it concludes with, you know, wherever the destination might be. And so that was pretty much my idea in, this, in doing this project. Um, I was fortunate to uh, get in touch with Jane Crow and learn about the photography work that she was doing with uh, the Telemon Corporation and all the children who took some really awesome photographs of their family lives. Um, and so together we were able to sort of combine these two projects into, into a single cohesive uh, presentation, uh, thanks to Chris and the New York Gallery of Knoxville who had the vision to, to pull all this together. Um, and they, they dovetail nicely because I think they, they, they show the humanity. There's a lot of rhetoric and there's a lot of um, um, uh, pol politics that are involved with the border, but the reality is it's, it, there, there's a lot of humanity there and there are people who come to this country to get jobs and they're willing to risk their lives in order to do that. And that's, you know, that's a story that needs to be told and it's maybe not told enough. And so by putting the human face on some of the people who who are making America work, um, you know, that, that all came together.
So part of part of coming here, one of the things that I've been really enthusiastic about is that we've been able to do some workshops uh, with the children. And as part of that, um, we've been giving them, sort of empowering them to create music, to create sounds with instruments of their own design. Um, like tubs of water with, with chopsticks that you can play and they sound like big bass drums or putting uh, beans inside of canisters and making shakers. And the idea is that anybody can be a musician, anyone can express themselves musically. And so in the case of the wall, um, that was the instrument that I wanted to use. And there was a narrative behind that that I wanted to tell, a story I wanted to tell, which was the immigration story. Some, some of the children, they'll have stories they want to tell. Maybe they'll say, oh, the other day I was really happy and I found this, this rock you know, that I put into this can and now I shake it and it makes my happy song. You know? Or um, we had a session today and, and some of the drummers were just like banging away and they were just like you know, ta taiko drummers you know, from Japan, just wailing away. And you know, that was, they were expressing a whole story. And the interesting thing about it is that there's no real set rules of what you have to do. The whole idea is just trying to express and trying to communicate. And it doesn't matter what your nationality is, what your language is, what your age is. You know, if you're just if you're listening to each other, you're able to communicate. And so we've been able to set up these workshops, and everyone's been able to uh, communicate in ways that go almost deeper. They go deeper. And it's also about listening too. Because you have to listen to the other person in order to, to communicate the ideas and mesh with them and create something. <laughs> And she's doing image, and so the two just came together very, very nicely. Um, the workshops or the photographs uh, have been really wonderful because I had, had an opportunity today um, when I got here to, to see the children getting all enthusiastic over these pictures, you know. And they're photographers, they're not just like kids with cameras, they're now photographers, and they're having a gallery exhibit. And you know, here's our here are their pictures, and they're really vested in the process. And I think that that, that sort of empowerment is something that. I was trying to do as well with the wall, you know, by turning into an instrument and saying that anybody can play it, whether you're from Mexico or the U.S. You know, here's like, one of the things I try to do is uh, make the technology that I, give all the techniques that I use, make it available to anybody. Um, and Jane basically said, "Okay, here kids, here are some cameras. Go take some photographs. You know, you are now photographers. You know, and that was just that was a, a wonderful gift to give them, and I was glad to be a part of that." <laughs> 